Okay, viewers, what we're look, gonna be working on today is a Sony GRX40AV 3 disc exchange mini hi fi component system. Now, based on my experience, Sony have never been good with any of their component systems of this type anyway. It's been set to be repaired when it was new, cassette deck stuffed up, first a motor or something, control circuit for the motor wasn't working properly, that got replaced. Then it's stuffed up again which I didn't bother fixing, so I did take it apart and it was actually the belts are gone, so yeah, the, or the mechanical mechanism that switched the heads around and yeah, just belts and stuff are too hard to find, can't get the right size belts, so it's not really worth spending money on that half of it, the, the lasers could be blind, and it just skips the disc and skips the disc and goes tick, 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 spins it and that's it, light rated disc, just keeps switching through all the discs and doing nothing. I did um, get it working a couple of times, but it died and never wants to play a CD. But it has got the auxiliary inputs. And another problem is this volume control. These use a stupid digital volume control. It's like a like a wheel or sparks or something in it. it. Runs on the contactor. And it sends a signal to a digital um, microwave processor. And the direction you turn it tells a microwave processor in the steps on this. Tells, per notch of this tells the uh, microprocessor and notches to turn the volume up. And this, now it isn't working. I used to be able to turn it down and it just goes straight flat out. I keep turning it down and it just turns it up. I turn it up and it just goes up and down and it just st stays on one notch. So I turn it slowly and the volume goes to one, but I turn it fast. Yeah, that's it. Nothing. So I'll put this little knob back on here. So what I'm going to do when we turn, taking this thing out and just opening it up and fixing it, because look at this, nothing. Yeah. Hey, cat. Anyway, I'm going to be opening it up, which on these sorts of systems it isn't fun. It's about a million screws and different bits of clips I've got to undo to get to this part of the board. So yeah, I'll be opening it up and yeah, stay tuned. Okay, viewers, I've got the stereo taken apart. Pretty nice to see how it all comes apart in a certain order. How all the cables just all plug in like that. And then the um, hardest part is remembering how it all goes back together. Okay, so before I touch that in there, I'm going to check this for dry joints. Just to see what the hell's going on with this thing. There's our Dolby Digital Surround Sound chip down there. Mm. I oh, see a crappy joint there. Uh, it is made in China, this stereo, so. Hmm. Hey, little St. Kyo cassette player motor, and there's belts that have fallen off. Um. That is just an absolute pain to get all in order. It just keeps, every time it goes, it starts, it rolls, and it just works its way off these pulleys. It just clicks. The gears aren't even engaging properly, so, yeah, that's just giving up on that. There's all the bits and pieces. SHOEI brand capacitors. Tire made Elna capacitors. T rectifier diodes. Bridge rectifier from the input. Filter caps. Or chokes and stuff. I don't know what burn that little capacitor is. C A P X O N. <laughs> the beauty about this one is it's got an STK based amplifier. There's our fan. So when you turn it up um, louder and louder, the fan kicks in, which is pretty quiet on this model. Big power transformer, input board, fused. Yeah, there's everything there is okay. This part of the stereo is okay. And when you turn or overload the speakers, these relays kick in and protect the amplifier, so yeah. Now to get to this volume control, this board here has to come off. Then you're going to undo those screws behind there, pop those grey clips, and the front fascia board comes out. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on that. Okay, viewers, well, there's a control board there. 
This is a neat little vacuum fluorescent display, which somehow has been burnt in the corner. I don't know if that's just a manufacturing defect or what, but yeah. Let's take yeah, tap it. It's technically a little picture tube, this thing. Known as a vacuum fluorescent display, but you can see closely a little shadow mask in there, the phosphorus. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Looks almost as if it is built like a picture tube of a CRT. It's got the same characteristics, how it like guns that connect and you got your little bits across the middle. Hey, interesting. Old clock electronics. Hmm, everything's okay there. Now all those screws have got to come undone to get to that front control um, panel. Be very careful on that. I think that's the date, 14th week of 1999. So, not very old. Alright, I'll keep you updated on this. Okay, viewers, I'm really starting to understand why these really aren't worth repairing in an electronics repair shop. The labour involved just to get to a simple fault. It's just a nightmare. That took me nearly what? About 20 minutes just to get to this fault so far. And then I got a desolder it. It's got three pins there, one there, one there, and open this thing up and I'm gonna clean out the contacts. Well, I could do it, actually no I can't, I don't have to desolder it actually, I could just unfold these little tabs here and it comes off. But I gotta do that carefully because there's little parts in there I don't want to get missing. So yeah, I'll do that. Clean a little contacts inside there, but like, it should work properly then. So, yeah, I'm really starting to understand why these are getting thrown away. A simple little thing is just a nightmare to get to. You gotta remember where all these have to go. Be very careful you don't bend any pins. Okay, I'll fix this and hopefully it comes good. If not, well, I'll have wasted my time. I'll just have to use the remote control for the volume. But yeah, keep it updated. Okay, Viola, so that's all it is. Little contacts and the top contact, which rolls on these. And all that does, it just tells a digital microprocessor inside there how loud they control the volume and stuff. Yeah. Little nice integrated circuits here. It's just a digital volume control, so if I pull this little thing out, inspect this under some sunlight, I'll probably find there's very fine, just the way it's worn basically. You can see on the outer edge where it's just worn out, the contact's not very good. If I get some contact cleaner on a little cotton butt and just brush those contacts over and polish this up as best I can. Hopefully it should work properly, so I'll do that, and we'll give it a try. Okay, the oil as well. I decided to get a little bit sidetracked. I've actually cleaned the selector wheel. This is just a selector, function selector. This here is actually the value controller. But this one here was actually pretty badly dirty. Lucky I did this one because the contacts in here are pretty dirty as well. Here's our volume one. Works nearly the same way. So there's a, there's a smooth, continuous copper trace on the outer wheel. And this is not a mucker clean out of it, just a grease, had all contact residue on it, which shorted up and blocked up all this um, tracer and stopped this thing from working properly. So I'm going to clean off all the excess grease because it really is a bit too much and this stuff does gum up and the volume button gets hard to turn. And it also gums up those contactors and causes it to not work at all, so yeah. Time to get this grease off it and there. Put it back together and give it, give it, give her a test. Just got a bit of contact cleaner, earbud, touched and scrubbed that contact with um tracer clean, and also those ones there. Yeah, it's good stuff a contact cleaner can do. So yeah, keep you updated. Okay, the oil's all all back together. That's what's left for the main drive belt. Just a perished chunk of rubber. The motor turns now. There's all a quarter around that motor shaft that was sticking to this plastic bracket behind here. And it's just hard in the motor. The motor couldn't have enough torque to overcome that. That's what's left of the belt, so... I don't know how easy they are to find. Not worth it nowadays anyway. I never used a cassette deck in years. I only used it two or three times. Now I'm going to find why that CD player isn't working. First things first, 
get some compressed air and clean this dust out before I put the rest back together. Another tip, when you're putting these little things on, get yourself the right size socket, preferably one of those long types, pull it around it and just carefully try and get it to start and you just use that socket to tighten it. Much easier, does less damage in pliers and you can get more control over it. Helps a lot. Same with this one. That's much easier to turn now. So yeah, I'm going to give these a good blow over. Then we can put it back together. Now that, I think, went... Uh, let's go. Up against there. Which was a lock of support back so that screws are to come out again. And that's got to go back there, so yeah. I'll do that and blow it out. Okay, the all is all success. We have a perfectly functional volume control. Control over your speed, of course. That is good. I'm happy with that. Yep, our skipping thing works. Our yeah, all presets. I can turn the volume up really nicely. So, that's my advice on how to fix these digital type volume controls. And yeah. Hardest part is, is putting it back together. Just be careful you don't bend any pins because these type of electronics are kind of delicate in places. Now it's doing its Sony demo. There we go. Took a bit to drain out because of those filter caps, but yeah. I'm impressed with that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is try and find out what is set if I just keep skipping and skipping and skipping and skipping. And skipping. Carousel just keeps spinning. One disc, no disc, no disc, no disc. That's all I get. And the CD is in there. The laser's clean, I've checked everything, so yeah. Pull this decoder printed circuit board off and find out if there's anything wrong under there. So yeah, keep you updated with that. Okay, the oil is all done. Nice, I can control the volume now without the remote. And when you work with electronics, you pull all the screws out, take that where they go, fair and well, right? All the screws are in, nothing wrong there, is there? Well, where the bloody hell did that come from? Every time when you work on something like this, anything electronics in general, you always left over with one screw and you're wondering, where the bloody hell did that come from? I looked inside there, took it, took notice what I was doing, yeah, everything's there, and all of a sudden, I don't know, but there's suddenly left of one screw left over. Don't you just hate that? So yeah, I fixed it. Apart from that, it's fixed. So yeah, that's how you can fix your volume control. And yeah, one more thing you want to note with ribbon cables and all that sort of stuff, do take note which way they unplug. Because if you plug them in the wrong way, your um, stereo is not going to work. Or you could do damage. So take note of what you're doing. And that's, yeah, fix the stereo up and yeah. Thanks for watching.